This is a small session uh, in which I'm going to tell you seven most important things that you should take care of during prelims. Right? Uh, prelims is close by. It's very close now. You should be geared. By, by, by this time, you should have um, your revisions in place. You should have started revising. Maybe even one round of revision would be done for most of aspirants who are very serious and very well prepared. Um, that's one. And then um, another thing is that uh, we, as we are getting closer to prelims, uh, we are also a bit um, anxious. Uh, if, you are, if you are a person, you are writing prelims for the first time, that is a difficult space. So the idea of this session is to give you some brief or some uh, pointers on which uh, we can delve on, we should be ready with uh, while we uh, uh, go towards prelims and how we write prelims for that, right? The seven pointers I'm going to talk, I'm not going to consume much of your time. So the first thing, first thing is uh, uh, revision, right? I do, I, get, I know, I know, and a lot of people have told you this, but it's still I want to reiterate this because that is the most important thing for prelims. Let me tell you, I lost my first prelims because I didn't revise well. I was continuously gathering data, and every time I gathered, I, I was thinking that I know more, I know more, I know more. But at the end of the day, when I came to the uh, uh, paper, there were questions which I actually have seen, but just because of the lack of revision, I ended up marking it wrong. All right. So that created a huge issue and I lost that prelims of 0 0.6 marks, right? That's a, that's a very slim margin and very sad margin also. So let's not get into that kind of an issue. Make sure now to whatever you, uh, data you have collected, that's good enough. That's good enough. You should be now basically reading it again and again and again and again and making it thorough. You cannot uh, uh, leave a question or uh, do a question wrong from a portion you have studied, from a portion that you know well. That's a that's a cardinal sin. That's an original sin in this exam, right? Very important. But it means of a prelim for that matter. More importantly for prelims because these days very factual information is being asked and you need to revise, right? Now what all do you revise? So one is uh, uh, one is your usual revision, whatever uh, you have done. Second, table size, right? There are a lot of tables you might have built. Tables on the reports and indices. Tables on committees. Tables on um, uh, apps of government, which ministries, what apps, tables on schemes, which schemes, which ministries, all those tables, uh, tables on Ramsar sites, tables on uh, UNESCO World Heritage sites, all these things need to be revised, right? So table revision is very important because uh, we make tables for things which are extremely important and then they come for exams pretty consistently. So these tables should be in your hand and you should be revising it thoroughly again and again, right? Second uh, revision uh, is something I call priority revision. Priority revision are those portions, let's say let's say you take one book, either Shankar's uh, Environment or Spectrum History. Uh, you know some particular portion UPSC is very fond of and there will be coming constantly from it. Those part alone you would speed revise. You will chuck all the things in between, right? And revise. So in history that might be, uh, let's say, most of the movements, right? What is the, uh, the Spadeshi movement? The non cooperation movement, the civil disobedience movement, all those movements you would write. Right? This is what I call a priority revision. Just prioritize according to the exam and how important this is to the syllabus. Right? Only that you revise. In a priority, you must revise emergency, you must revise fundamental rights, you must revise uh, parliament right? Those are important areas. Though, let's say, uh, let's say we do, do not have a question till now, I think, from let, uh, the Schedule cast and schedule tri tribe areas, very less questions, right? That you can, you should revise, but that, that might not come in your priority revision. That's what I'm saying. So, a priority revision. Got it? Great. Apart from that, whatever tests you have taken, you should revise that also, yeah, because if you have seen a question in a test and it comes in the exam and you do not know, that's a huge issue. Whatever test you should whether it's this, this coaching institution, some other coaching institution, or anything for that matter, free, uh, all those things you should be revising, right? Secondly, this you should have done by now, but if you haven't, then this is the time to do it. This is the very last point in time that you should be doing it. This is the last uh, uh, phase that you have, you must do this. That is to do the previous year UPSC question paper. If you haven't done it, it is going to cost you a lot. At least last three years question papers, you must, must do. Because that is the current sentiment of the problem. Last three years, question papers have been difficult. Some of them very difficult. I think 2019 was very difficult. Uh, so, but everything had the same genetics, right? The genetics were the same. 
if you know 2018 paper you know 2019 paper to an, to an extent right to an extent you know this is the kind of question that has been coming unless you do that and go for the exam you are in for a surprise and that is some surprise we do not need any day. so make sure you do the previous year question paper right the second is previous year question paper also i would suggest uh, uh, if you can uh, and if, if, if you are not good with uh, 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 aptitude and that logical reasoning and english you must do the previous year one two question papers of paper two also don't keep it to the very end like five days before the exam i'll check whether i can do it and in the end you have a good score in gs and a very uh, in gs one and you have a low score in gs and you're disqualified that's a terrible space to be please do not do that make sure you do one question paper of gs2 also right now right now means right now and then you see your score should be somewhere about 100 right you should at least have 40 marks uh, buffer right that's good and lately it has been a bit more difficult 2019 paper was difficult I am, a, I, I am from IIM CAT, I am done CAT, then I am also finding it a bit difficult, okay? That means I, I know uh, absolute through and through and all the logical reasoning and what all English questions, I can deal it very well. But I found it difficult, the 2019 paper I found it difficult. So if you are thinking that you can tackle it uh, in the paper and then uh, you have an extra content on that, let me tell you, no. Please do it, please make sure that you are doing a good job in that paper also. And if not, if you are not doing, uh, if you don't have a score more than 100, if you have scoring to 70 or something, make sure every day you put two hours into it. To see that you are able to see pattern patients are repeating. So those patterns you find out, what is the way to solve it? That's all. Right? Do that. Very important. Now, uh, the third thing I would like to tell you is about the atlas. Right? Geography questions have been predominantly from the atlas. So you should know atlas very thoroughly, especially the Indian map, right? You know, passively looking at Indian map, you're looking at uh, uh, what is uh, uh, like how are places juxtaposed to each other in the sense that what is on the same latitude, what, what is on the same latitude, what uh, latitude, what is on the same longitude, which national park is above which national park, uh, uh, the top down, uh, uh, the north south orientation of na national parks, the east west orientation of national parks, right? Uh, the rivers and tributaries that we do have a table for that, uh, I believe. Rivers and tributaries, all these things should be in place. And atlas should be seen. I uh, what I used to do was closer to the exam, 10 to 20 days. I would dedicate half an hour for the atlas, one map a day, a few things a day, and even the world geography is important. I see all the seas, all the rivers, important rivers, all the cities that have been current affairs. That also I mark and keep. I see uh, the equator, what all countries go to equator, what all tropical Capricorn, what is the cancer, all that I continuously revise. There is a probability that even a very traditional, very direct question from the Atlas can come. So Atlas has become a very important uh, dimension in the exam right now because of the map-based questions that are coming. So please do that. Right? So that's three for you. Now four. This is also a place where you can talk to your friends with a constructive discussion in place, where the, some friend can ask you a few questions over the phone and you can ask them a few questions over the phone. And just keep on asking each other some important questions and keep answering them. Though I'm not saying do it very, at a very extensive level, do it at a uh, medium, like a bit. Because of that, when you get something wrong and when a friend, friend is talking to you, this is the right answer, your memory keeps on developing. Then next time when that question comes, you remember that this friend had asked me this and then I had made this wrong and this was the answer. Right? So through conversations also, this is a wonderful time where you can keep asking all the national parks, where, uh, where all the tributaries of rivers. So all those really boring, uh, very uh, factual, very pedestrian things, you can use a discussion method to actually uh, 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 ask each other questions. Uh, I used to do this when I was in hostel because people were in and around. So we used to, we used to gather in the hall and then keep asking each other questions. Whenever we are eating, we make sure that at least uh, that time is also spent very well. Especially we can do when you are eating or something, you can just call some friend up. You can eat also and keep answering questions for that. Uh, even during eating, you are some, something somewhere revising. Anyway, it's sad that's how life is for this, right? I know you have to revise uh, every point where uh, you are away. Sad, but that's how it is. That's how this exam is. You can't say anything, else, right? You have to live it. Anyways, so that is the, uh, I think that is fourth, right? Fourth, yeah. That's the fourth, that's the fourth thing. Now, fifth, fifth, what is more important? Then I'm going to, I'm going to talk about the really hygiene factors here, um, which are pretty much everyone knows. Like everyone knows these things, but still we are a bit lazy to do this. I would say do not do, right? One, visiting your center, whatever center it is, right? You are going to visit it. You are going to see the center. You are going to make sure this is my center earlier 
much before the exam one or two days before the exam or or three days whenever you are comfortable go see the center ask them whether this is the center see everything in the center find find a place to rest uh, around the center because between the exam one and between exam two you might have pretty much uh, a, a bit of time and the season is a bit rainy it's a bit like rainy so you need a shed to where, where you can sit and revise or do something right that is important so find a place closer to your center where you can rest if you have mother or parents or someone who can keep on carrying you that's good i'm talking about people who might not have parents or whose parents cannot come to the place right and then uh for those people it's important that you i i am some person i i i did everything from delhi so my parents were uh, uh, not even close they were not even around so i used to find a place either a cafe coffee day or something else uh, depends if you have northern place it's easier otherwise you find some uh, uh, shed or some ground or somewhere where you can sit down and relax that's important for me so you should do the same thing for me so this is the center find a place where you can spend the uh, uh, hours in between and make sure that this is the center uh, that you have fine Uh, another hygiene factor i would call like talk about is your pen so make sure you have multiple pens and what not and what not what kind of a pen is required so you basically read that instruction there are additional instructions there are additional covid instructions so go through that go through everything that is about covid and what all precautions you have to take in the examination hall do not wait for the very end day to go through it go through it at least 5 to 10 days before get ready with all those things right finally help especially in the second both for limbs and knees yeah This attempt is going to be very strenuous because of COVID being a a, a huge issue, uh, and then you have to take care of your health. If something happens while you are preparing, even uh, even now or even closer to the exam, if this is failure, then we lose this attempt. Okay, let's not do that. Let's not get those uh, risks at all. Do not go out of your houses unless it's extremely necessary. Do not go out of your houses. Stay, study, keep your health intact, make sure you sanitize everything and whatnot and whatnot. Your health is extremely important for the exam, and make sure you do a good job with it, right? Take all precautions required. So that is mostly the hygiene factors, and I, I, I was about to tell you. Now six. These are things I would uh, six and seven are things which I keep exactly while I am writing the exam. Till now, I have discussed things which were about for taking precautions and taking uh, all the measures for you to be successful uh, 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 before the exam arrives, right? This is in the exam. While you are writing the exam, while you have a pen and paper and an homework sheet and the question paper beside you, right? At that point, what do you do? One, every time you read a question, underline the important points. Underline. What are they asking? They are asking this, uh, this. They are asking this. Major points, major uh, uh, keywords of the question you are going to underline. And then you also underline whether they are asking whether it is correct statement or incorrect statement they are asking. Then you read the options. There also you keep on underlining, right? And while reading the option, do not jump. Do uh, read one option and decide that is the answer, and then finish up and go right. No, read every option with a very neutral uh, um, point of view. Right? You have not decided this is the answer. You are saying, "Oh, this might be the answer. Fine, I'll keep it." Next, 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 and you will uh, in the end understand that that what might have been the answer is actually wrong, and the better answer is down below. Always read all the options with the same uh, 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 state of mind, with a very neutral point of view. And then get and then finally uh, see uh, I mean just suppose one one against the other and decide on the option mark on the paper. Please do that thoroughly multiple times. Even I had made a mistake of uh, uh, because I have a tendency to uh, do everything pretty much fast. Uh, so I made a mistake in this manner and you cannot forgive yourself for making such mistake mistake especially in an extremely competitive arena where every question comes right. Great and another the seventh and the final thing right. Attitude towards the question. This is something I call the attitude towards the question. You might read a question and you think you, you think that I don't know anything about it. I've never heard this. I've never heard this. I, I will not. Uh, uh, I will not answer this. There's no point to answer. You skip the question. No. You read the question thrice. Then you read the option. Right. You tell yourself I can get some answer out of this. Then you push yourself to get an answer. And till you can't find that answer, then you leave it. But make sure do not prejudge the question. That's the point here. Do not prejudge the question whether you know it or not. Unless you read the question thoroughly and evaluate all the options, then only decide whether you should do it or not. There are a lot of sitters, right? Very easy questions which are mocked or camouflaged as very difficult questions and thrown at you. But once you come out of the exam hall and read the options, you will be like, "Oh my God, this I could have written. Oh my God, this is so easy, right?" So that kind of a thing cannot happen to you. So please approach all questions with the same state of mind, right? I hope that is also clear. Um, 
and uh, uh, yeah so that's the final thing i would like to say uh, uh, another thing is yeah fight till the end yeah. fight till the end this is this is also part of the uh, uh, part of the thing which i say while writing the paper fight till the end yeah. you might know uh, you might not know the first two questions first four questions first five questions or even seven questions does not matter yeah. does not matter you are going to fight they are, are the questions that we know are still ahead there are much more questions do not get all hard work and oh my god this attempt is gone i already does not do not know 10 questions i have right now what i am going to do no you fight you can't even see fight right till the very 100 questions we approach it with the same state of mind and the same confidence and the same power we are approaching the first question you will get it. you will find answers you will know the 11th question you know the 13th question you know then the 15th question you know and then you keep on getting questions then you come back to the first 10 questions you did not know there you find that oh my god with more content i i got the answer for this i got the answer for this it's all about confidence to an extent when it comes to the exam and that particular situation so fight to win that's my final point i hope uh, uh, you do well in this exam we have to crack it i wish you all the best right i wish you all the best take care of yourself do the exam well yeah, uh, and i i'm i'm sure that if you have if you have done revision like three, three, three rounds of revision or three to four rounds of revision you have covered almost all the syllabus and then you are going for the exam there is a very high probability that you are going to clear even if the exam is extremely difficult that's okay for everyone it's going to be difficult because you have done everything and you are going you know it's difficult so everyone is difficult right so i hope you i wish you all the best uh, thank you